We're going to do some more real estate math today. Number one says, what is the market value of a rental property that generates $2,000 in net operating income and has a capitalization rate of 6%? Okay, remember our T method. Our T method, we have a percent here. We have this percent, so we can definitely use the T method. Let me make this a little smaller. So I'm gonna draw my own T, T chart. Okay, so my 6% goes in here, in this section, right? Because it's the rate. And then this here is my net operating income. According to the T-chart, net operating income comes up here. It's on the part. So we put $2,000 here. So we know now that we have to divide, right? We have a top and this bottom here. So we're going to divide these two and we're going to get the total market value right because it's asking what's the market value with this cap rate but remember before we divide we have to change this percent that's the first step we have to change this percent to a decimal so we divide it by a hundred and that gives us 0 0.06 oh i think oh because i put two hundred thousand i put two thousand sorry about that See, gotten these numbers in my head. There we go. Okay, there. I did put the question right. So let me put this. Let me erase this to make sure you guys don't get confused. So it is 2,000 divided by 0 0.06. So we're going to say that the final answer is D. So here we have another one. It says, what will be the annual property tax bill if a property tax rate is 1.5% and a property is assessed at a value of $350,000? Okay, so we can whip out our little T method again. Okay, so if this is the assessed value, that would be here, right? We need to know what's the annual property tax. So we have the tax amount here. Wait, it should be here total. This annual, I'm sorry, this annual property tax should not, that should be assessed value. Anyway, which is the same thing as market value, okay? So then we're gonna just, we have, we have the 350,000 here, which is our total amount, right? It's assessed. And then we have one and a half percent tax rate over here. But now, remember, we have to divide this by 100. Always divide your percents by 100. Do not, do not, do not depend on this percent of your calculator, okay? Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes you'll forget. So definitely, just trust me when I tell you this. We have 1.5%. We got to change this to a decimal. So we're dividing it by 100. So it becomes 0 0.015. So now we're going to multiply because that's what this T method tells us. So $350,000 times 0 0.015. Let me make this smaller. And that's going to equal, we put it in our calculators, $350,000 times 0 0.015. $5,250. So that's our final answer. D as in David. Awesome. All right, here we go. It says, what is the total price of a property that is 1,500 square feet and priced at $200 per square foot? So we're just going to say 1,500 times two hundred dollars oh no not fifteen hundred dollars what am i talking about it's fifteen hundred square feet times two hundred dollars okay when we punch that into our calculator and yes i definitely need a calculator still i'm a former math teacher but now i'll tell you one thing i don't know how to add 25 plus 2 that's my horrible thing so and trust me i have friends that will Tell you otherwise, you know, tell you exactly the same thing. So therefore, our answer is 300,000. All right, let's keep going. All right, this is a real chunky one, okay? This is a one for amortization, amortization, 
amortization. And this is a very chunky problem. All right. So there's like three massive steps, three or four massive steps on this kind of question. It says, what will be the remaining principal balance on a mortgage loan of $250,000 with an annual interest rate of four and a half percent after making a monthly payment of $1,266.71 for one month? Okay. Let's go over this. Now, I do this a totally different way than maybe your teacher or professor instructor advised you. I do this with what's called what I call the PIP sandwich, okay? Where I start with the new, old balance. The balance is basically your bread. This is the old balance, and then I have my payment, my interest, how much went to interest? How much went to principal? And then my my new balance. Okay. Now I start plugging in all the information they gave me. So I know that the beginning balance is $250,000. So $250,000. And it has an annual interest rate of four and a half. We're going to use that in, a, in the next step. And then it says, after making a monthly payment of $1,200, whatever, right? For one month. So that's my payment. That's going to be their payment. So $1,266.71. Okay. Now we got to find all the other meat, all the other stuff. So step one. I don't know if I would consider this step one or step two. But, hey, this is step one. I'm going to call, I'm going to put it in blue. Step one. Okay. So step one is to use the simple interest formula. We got to find out how much interest this person is going to be charged for this one month. All right. So we're going to use the simple interest formula, which is I equals P times R times T, where this is your principal, your rate, and your time based in years. This is in years. Always remember that. Now, let's find out how much interest they got charged for this. So the principal is this remaining balance, this beginning balance, $250,000. Times the rate, which is given here, 4.5%. Remember, we have to divide it by 100. So that's going to equal 0 0.045. And then time, this is only one month out of the whole year. So we're going to say 1 over 12. It's 1 12th, one month out of the whole year. Remember, this is based on years. But I know that sounds, that looks crazy. So don't get upset. We're going to rewrite this because that way we can put it in our calculator easier. And we're going to say time 0 0.0. Four, five, and then divide this by 12. Okay? Now, this is how you're going to do it on your calculator. You have 250,000 times 0 0.045 equals, okay? Then divide by 12. And they have a total interest of $937.50 on that payment. Okay, so now I know that my interest here is $937.50. Now step two. Let's see here. Step two is finding how much of this payment, right, went towards principal after we took out the interest. Okay. Remember, that's, let me say that again. Now we're going to find out how much went towards the principal balance from this payment. Okay, we got to just take away this much of interest. So now we're going to just say $1,266.71 minus $937.50. And then when you punch that into the calculator, let's see here. 
you're going to get $329.21. That's how much went to principal. Okay? Now, step three. Step three now, we have to find out what's our new balance. Okay? So since this money is interest, we're not really interested in that anymore. We now know that this much went towards the principal, towards this amount. So to find our new balance, we just subtract these two. So we say 250000 minus $329.21. So that's what's going to be left over after that first month payment towards their principal balance. And the answer is $249,670.79. So that's our new balance here, 249670.79. And you would do that over and over for every month, okay? But thankfully here, we don't have to because the answer is right here, A. Let's go on to the next one. We are going to see here, it says, if a home buyer is responsible for paying $4,500 in closing costs on a home purchase of $150,000, of $150, what percentage of the purchase price do the closing costs represent? Okay, so since we have percentage, we can totally use our little wonderful, handy dandy, trusty worthy T method. Okay, now check this out. We are $4,500 in closing costs. So that's going to be a part. Okay, that's not the full total. The full total is this purchase price of $150,000. All right, so when we plug in we have $4,500 here and then $150,000 $150, here. So our T method says that we have to divide and then we're gonna get, this is our answer. Okay, but remember, we're gonna have to multiply by 100 because it's gonna be a percent, right? Look, our answers are all in percent and our answer is gonna come out as a decimal. So we have $4,500 divided by $150,000 gives us 0 0.03. So we have $4,500 divided by $150,000 equals 0 0.03. So now that needs to be converted to a percent. So we have to multiply by 100 and that gives us 3%. So therefore, our answer is C. We have one last question here. It says, if a property is listed for $250,000 and the seller agrees to a 5% commission to the listing agent, how much will the listing agent receive in commission? Well, remember, we have a percent. So let's bring out our wonderful friend, the T method, okay? And we know that using this T method, that it says it's listed for 250,000. That's our total price. So we put 250K here and it says 5% commission. The percents always go in this little box. So 5%. And our T method says that we have to multiply when we are given these two values. Now, remember, we can't multiply yet because we have to change this percent to a decimal. So we divide by 100 and we get 0 0.05. Now we know to multiply $250,000 by 0 0.05, okay? And we get a total commission of 12500 Good job for those of you that got this answer right. This is very important. This is how you're going to get paid, people. This is, pro this is the most important thing. Thank you all so much for attending. And I will see you guys on Tuesday. Don't forget to study, study, study for your, for your exams. Remember, practice, practice, practice. 
All right, guys, I adore you all so much. Thank you so much for attending my live. I will see you guys on Tuesday. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.